Good afternoon and welcome to Midday Moms. This is Dorothy Polarski. I'd like to welcome each and every one of you that are uh, signing on and registering, or not signing on, you've already registered, but for signing on. As you're signing on, um, could you say hello to us in the chat box? Um, we always like to know who's here. So, you know, if just in the chat box, you can say, hi, I'm Francine from France, or I'm Claudette from Colorado, or I'm Mary from Mississauga. Um, and if you have any questions during the session, I would also ask you to please, you know, put them in the chat. And I will also ask you to start praying to um, St. Michael, because it appears that our um, internet is a little bit unstable. So say, um, let's say a quick hello. Hi, Gail from Toronto. Um, hello, Catherine from uh, Guelph. Hi, Liz. Actually, Liz is going to know a lot about um, our Lady of Fatima, because Liz is from Portugal originally, and she has often attended um, my own mother's group. So uh, hi, Roseanne from Campbellville. Great to see you. Uh, really, really, really wonderful to see you all. Thank you for saying hello. When, when you say hello, it puts a flutter in my heart, because then I know that you're here. <laughs> um, uh, there's Claude. I know that Claude is... Uh, actually in Dubai and she's a, a regular. So hi, Claude, Carmela from, uh, a, uh, from uh, Maple, Roseanne from the Mother's Group at Our Lady of Peace. So a big, 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 big warm welcome. I should also introduce and welcome our guest. <laughs> Here I am welcoming you all. I should welcome our guest. Uh, welcome, Barb, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Uh, thank good, you to, good to see you now. Um, Barb, I, I know that you've got like a bed in the background, and I just wanted to clarify to everyone that Barb has actually made quite a sacrifice to join us today. Uh, she's in a hotel room. So can you tell us a little bit about where you're from, why you're in a hotel room, and what you're doing tomorrow, and what, what's, what is special about tomorrow? Well, I'm actually uh, I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I traveled to Madison, Wisconsin this morning. I'm speaking tonight at a Legatus women's group. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Legatus. It's a Catholic business organization. And so I'll be speaking at their dinner tonight. And tomorrow is May 13th, which is a feast of Our Lady of Fatima. And I am the communications director for the World Apostle of Fatima USA, which uh, is actually located in uh, Washington, New Jersey. But we have member nations all around the world and we have our international offices in Fatima, Portugal. So what an honor to, you know, to have you here. Barb has been a Catholic writer for 30 years. I had the great privilege of um, meeting her a number of years ago when she interviewed me for a piece in the National Catholic Register. And uh, oh my gosh, I just, I loved her writing and it's just such an honor to have her here. Uh, yes, someone says happy feast of Our Lady of Fatima. So tomorrow will be happy feasting um, the, ha the Our Lady of Fatima's feast. Um, before I ask some questions to Barb about Our Lady of Fatima and what moms can learn and all of that, I want to tell some of you that maybe are here for the very first time a little bit more about our ministry. So again, my name is Dorothy Polarski, and if you want to learn more about our ministry, I always say go to Google and key in three words, Catholic Moms Group. Real simple, Catholic Moms Group. We are faith partners with the Archdiocese of Toronto, and we are on a mission to revive the vocation of motherhood, and we do so primarily by helping parishes start Catholic Moms Groups. We now have um, groups not only in Canada, but we also have groups in the United States. Um, I always get a little bit of a giggle when I say we have a, a group in uh, at St. Nicholas Parish in North Pole, Alaska. <laughs> and we've got one in Colorado, Minnesota, Mississippi. So we're real excited. I'm going to show you just a very short 
um, ministry video. Those are for those of you that um, maybe are here for the first time. So again, if you go to a Catholic Moms Group, uh, we help parishes start Catholic Moms Groups. We can help you start a group for moms only, for mothers and tots, and we can also help you start virtual meetups. And here is our ministry video. Come, oh, there we go. Mothers, by our very nature, we are nurturing, loving caregivers. We are social beings made for friendship and community. We are also spiritual by nature, made by a loving God to know him and love him, and to pass this love of our Catholic faith on to our children. But right now, many mothers feel overextended, distracted, and exhausted. Though as Catholics, we have the community of our church, many mothers attending Mass could not name the mom sitting next to them in the pew they share. Community and support among Catholic mothers is desperately needed in this hectic and chaotic culture. Your parish needs you to bring these moms together. Hi, my name is Dorothy Polarski. I'm the founder of Catholic Moms Group. We at Catholic Moms Group are on a mission to revive the vocation of motherhood. We exist to bring together like-minded, faith-filled mothers who crave community and are focused on spiritual growth, Catholic teaching, and fellowship. Can you imagine a thriving, engaged mothers group at your parish? A group of moms in love with their Catholic faith, ready to serve other mothers no matter what stage of motherhood they're at. Can you imagine what a difference that would make at your parish? Starting a mother's group, it's not rocket science, but working with a team who's done it before and who's done it dozens and dozens of times sure does help. The Catholic Moms Group membership site is an online community that offers training, resources, and dozens of tools for parishes to help them start a mother's group quickly and efficiently. We're here to provide you with a clear path to launching a Catholic Moms Group at your parish. All of our materials are 100% Catholic. We have clearly laid out meetup plans for both moms groups and toddler groups. We are obedient to the magisterium of the Catholic Church. We have created dozens of tools that are going to save you time and energy. And besides that, we love our Blessed Mother. We constantly turn to her for her intercession. You can make a huge impact in your parish, so join us. We are revolutionizing the way parishes start mothers groups by providing parishes with a Catholic mothers group starter kit and by nourishing and training a community of Catholic mothers group leaders across the world. It's time to start a mothers group at your parish. Join us today. That's our ministry, and uh, these virtual meetups started as a result of the pandemic, okay? So up until the pandemic, all of our meetups were in person at a parish, and then um, when we started Midday Moms, I thought, okay, we'll do three or four of these sessions, and then this pandemic will be over. <laughs> and meanwhile, two years, week after week after week, we've been uh, hosting Midday Moms, uh, we're not hosting them now every single week because things are opening up. So our face-to-face -face groups are opening up. But uh, if you're interested in starting a Catholic Moms group, go to our website, catholicmomsgroup.com and just um, look for the form that says start here and you'll be in touch with me. So anyway, uh, a big warm welcome to Barb. Barb, can you tell us just a little bit more about yourself before we begin, um, sure. you know, talking a little bit about Fatima? So, yes, you're the editor, but 
how many kids do you have? Like just any, any little tidbits, yeah. Well, I'm an empty nester now, but boy, oh boy, do I remember when my kids were young and um, I actually was, was involved with the babysitting co-op in my parish and it was like a Catholic mom's group and we'd get together, we'd help watch each other's kids and they have become my lifelong friends. So now we're all raising young adults and we're, we call ourselves the soul sisters. We pray for each other. We bring all of our needs to each other. It's, it's really a great blessing to have those Catholic moms around you. It's, it's your support group for your life. And, and so I have three children. Uh, Sarah is 27 and she's married. Uh, Rachel is 26 and maybe we'll get married soon. And my son, Nathan, is 20, and he's a U.S. Marine out in Camp Pendleton, California. Yay! I'm married for, um, see, I've been married for 28 or 29 years. Oh, I know, <laughs> I know so, it was soon after I got married, I started having children, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. So, no, it's just, you know, great to get to know you. And I, one thing um, I loved at my own mother's group, having mothers that had children that were older, because even though my kids were like two and two months, I loved learning from moms because then they kind of warned me, well, this is going to happen at this stage and don't worry when that happens. So, um, you know, having that combination is, uh, is fantastic mm -hmm. and having that wisdom. So thank you so much for joining us. Now, you know, there are a lot of people that um, maybe don't know about Our Lady of Fatima. Can you tell us a little bit about Our Lady of Fatima? Yeah, Our Lady of Fatima is goes back to uh, 1917 in Portugal, Fatima, Portugal, and um, the three little shepherd children, Lucia, Jacinta, and Francisco, who were just 10, or they were actually, yeah, 10 and, and nine and seven years old. Uh, Our Lady appeared to them on May 13th, and she said she was from heaven and not to be afraid. And she said she was going to appear on the 13th through the month of October, and she would reveal who she was later. She also said that she would perform a miracle in October for all those who wouldn't believe. And in that very first apparition, which we celebrate tomorrow, um, it's, it's very similar to what she was asked at the Annunciation when the angel Gabriel appeared to her and announced that, you know, God wanted to use her as, you know, to have the child Jesus. She says to the children that day, um, are you willing to offer yourselves to God and bear with submission all that he wills to send in your day and as an act of reparation and for the conversion of sinners. And so she kind of asked for their fiat that day. And, and Sister Lucia, who Lucia was the oldest of the three seers who later became Sister Lucia, who I think many people know. She said that was the essential message of Our Lady of Fatima because our Lord wants our obedience to our, to our state in life, to, to his will for our particular state in life. And he wants us to unite our sufferings to his. That's what's going to make us holy. And that's what's going to bring about graces or conversions of others. And, you know, this is like something that um, really strikes me about Our Lady of Fatima. A, a couple of things strike me. Um, our Blessed Mother came down from heaven to earth and appeared to a 10-year-old a nine-year-old and a seven-year-old. Yes. And I don't know how many of you here have a 10-year-old, a nine-year-old and a seven-year-old. Um, one of my kind of big, uh, you know, messages that I'm, I'm trying to get across to, to moms is that children can have mystical experiences, right? Um, and I think that as mothers, you know, that would be, you know, one of our, I think, responsibilities is to, is to create a home that recognizes that possibility. Like it always kind of like drives me crazy when I go to mass and, you know, like I see moms giving, you know, their kids, you know, Cheerios and then giving them a stuffed animal and then giving them a bottle of water. And then, and then it's like, oh my gosh, you know, maybe God wants to talk to them. Maybe, you know, there's could be a mystical experience there, but we're stimulating our children so much with worldly things, even at mass, right? Um, the, the other thing too, um, 
do you know much about apparitions at all? Because when I grew up as a Catholic, I, I, I was born in Poland and raised in a Catholic family. And um, my mother never really talked to me about apparitions, right? Or what they were. And so even though I was born in Poland and raised in a very religious family, my mom didn't have, you know, conversations that, oh, our blessed mother, she came down from heaven and she came, you know, and she spoke to these children and our blessed mother came down and, you know, in Lourdes. To... So I was, as a Catholic, I was very, very kind of confused. I thought that there was like more than one Mother Mary when I was a child, right? <laughs> I was like, oh, there's one in Lord, there's one here. Um, now, can you tell us a little bit more about what an apparition is and, um, you know, any information that you have? Because yeah. I'm, I'm kind of... Not there are many, many thousands of apparitions, but the church has only formally recognized a handful, really, because apparitions can be, can seriously... Um, be false apparitions. And so the church is very, very careful. In fact, the Fatima messages, the Fatima apparitions were not approved until 1930. And so that's when the diocese formally approved them. We know about the apparitions of our, our St. Bernadette. And, you know, it was uh, when she, right after the church had confirmed or had declared the dogma of the Immaculate Conception, that was the term Our Lady used to identify herself to Bernadette, which is what convinced the bishop that these were true. Now, all apparitions direct you to the gospel message and to Jesus. Um, I have a problem with um, a lot of so-called private revelations today. I can almost pick them out and you can, you know, they're, they're the way that Our Lady they claim that Our Lady's speaking to them, I can pick it out as being possibly from their own meditations. I mean, Our Lady is always a woman of very few words, like our Lord. I mean, he used, he took three, three years to declare the whole public revelation. And I always said to my kids, you do not have to believe in the Fatima apparitions, but I want you to believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the Catholic Church. You know, so if somebody doesn't believe in the Fatima apparitions, that doesn't do anything uh, bad to them because it is the gospel message. And actually our organization, the World Apostle of Fatima, and I will say as a disclaimer, we are not America Needs Fatima. There's so much confusion between our two organizations. We were founded in 1947 and we, we grew, we took the Fatima message around the world largely through the world famous international Pilgrim Virgin statue of Fatima, which actually came from Fatima into Ottawa, Canada. Oh, wow. years ago, and she traveled 52 days in Canada first and at the same time Our Lady of the Cape was doing a there was a big procession that was coming from Our Lady of the Cape to Ottawa and the two kind of crisscrossed so we had a little bit of a celebration last week on May 1st in uh, on the banks of the Detroit River between the Windsor uh, Ontario and Detroit pilgrims both with those two statues there Oh, that's great. The rosary across the borders with each other. Oh, so there's, um, yeah, so it's very important that Canada was where our statue first came. And she's been traveling around the world ever since. And that's largely how the Fatima message got spread worldwide was through that statue, which is still under our custody. Um, I'm kind of losing track. But um, so our, so we operate under the authority of the church. We're a public association of the faithful. And it is our mission to take up what Lucia was given. Our lady had said to her in the second apparition, our Lord wants to use you to spread the devotion to my immaculate heart. And so she wanted her to learn to read and write. Well, Lucia went on to, to re write 60,000 letters to people all over the world. And that's why her canonization cause is taking a little longer because there's so much they have to go through. And um, so our mission, we feel, is to pick up where she left off after she died in 2005 to continue to spread that devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Wow, that's a, a, a lot of writing. <laughs> that's a lot of writing. Um, so what are some of the messages of um, Fatima for maybe, you know, maybe for the novice listener here that doesn't know what some of the messages are? Yeah, so each of the six apparitions, she was, again, a woman of very few words, but was very pointed and direct about 
that, you know, she wanted everybody to pray the rosary every day in order to obtain peace in the world. And at that time, the children's families only prayed the rosary during the month of May and October. And the children being children, they were normal kids. They would whip through their rosaries really fast in order to go place. So they'd say, Hail Mary, Hail Mary, Hail Mary, Hail Mary. And so she said, you need to pray the rosary every day. And as, as I said, in that first apparition, she asked them to offer up every day their sufferings and sacrifices and um, accept and bear with submission what God was going to bring in their lives, which we know Francisco and Jacinta were not, they didn't live for long after that. They died of the Spanish flu in 1919 and 1920. Now in the, in the second apparition, I love the June apparition because Our Lady had told Lucia and, Jac and Jacinta and Francisco that Jacinta and Francisco would come to heaven soon, but Lucia would be asked to remain for some time in order to spread the devotion to the Immaculate Heart, that God wanted that established at this time. Well, sometime was 88 more years. Glad she didn't tell her, Lucia might have jumped off a cliff, but <laughs> what I love is their touching statement to her because Lucia was very sad. She was already suffering a lot from the people who weren't believing that they were seeing the Blessed Mother. They were being taunted, you know, suddenly her mother was very upset with her. She never accepted that the Blessed Mother could really come to somebody in her family. And that's another thing for us moms. She could not accept those apparitions because she couldn't believe that Our Lady would choose her family, but she did. And Lucia is our guiding force for us these days. Um, but anyway, she said to Lucia, are you suffering a lot? Do not be afraid. I will never forsake you. My Immaculate Heart will be your refuge and the way that will leave you, lead you to God. Lucia took that to heart all her life in all of her struggles and always found refuge in the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And I will say I have too as a mother in many, many, many ways and also through that rosary. Yeah, and and so, you know, like I I guess I have to be careful that I, that I don't take things too far. And I, I just kind of realized too that we didn't open with a, a short prayer. So I'm going to, it's 223. I'm going to pause right now. And I'm going to just, uh, just maybe we could pray um, uh, just three Hail Mary. So dear Lord, thank you for bringing all of us together. Those people that have joined us today for Midday Moms. And thank you for Barb. And we ask our Blessed Mother to wrap her loving arms around each and every one of us here and help us to get closer to her son. And so we'll pray three Hail Marys. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I always say that sometimes I forget to do I should be doing at the beginning, but when the Holy Spirit reminds me, I, I stop. But um, I, like I, I'm kind of imagining... Um, that, you know, our, our, our blessed mother appeared to these children and she made requests of them. Yes. Um, and isn't she in a way, I don't know, but isn't she in a way by that gesture making that same request to us, do you think, Barb? Oh, think? absolutely. What I like to say about the, the children is... Um, they were like empty vessels because they were so young. And that's why our Lord would come to young children. Our lady would come to them. Bernadette was pretty young and innocent. She comes to those that can receive the grace and be open. I mean, Lucia said when our lady asked that question on May 13th, are you willing to offer yourself? She said, I had no idea what I was saying yes to, but we were so enamored by her beauty and how she just emanated light and you know she off several times opened her hands and the light of god streamed from her and they were immersed in that light and you know they just couldn't even explain it so they were having these extremely mystical experiences that they couldn't they felt compelled inwardly not to speak about 
Mm-hmm. And so they were having these powerful experiences with nobody to guide them. They had no spiritual director, but because of their innocence, they were able to receive and hear the word of God. And, you know, Francisco, I always say he was the one who really drew me to the Fatima message because he became, he was kind of a, uh, he was a very gentle and kind young boy, but he would have been somebody that was bullied because if he was picked on, he would just shrug his shoulders and walk away. So today we might say he was an easy target to be bullied, but Mm -hmm. they had, um, I didn't mention that before Our Lady appeared in 1917, they had three visits by the angel, the angel of peace he identified. And that was in 1916. He, He called himself also the guardian angel of Portugal, which the Portuguese believe is St. Michael the Archangel. Mm-hmm. And so it's possible it was actually St. Michael the Archangel who appeared to these tr- three children. And what the angel taught them was Eucharistic reparation. Mm-hmm. And that he said, the hearts of Jesus and Mary have designs of mercy on you. He was demanding of them prayer and sacrifice and worship of our Lord in the Holy Eucharist. Now, he spoke with such authority and the children after the angel would be gone they would be left in such a supernatural aura that they could hardly even walk mm-hmm. and he taught these prayers of reparation before the the holy eucharist that demanded of them to console their god who was offended by sacrilege indifference and you know the offenses against the body and blood of our lord and savior jesus so what a huge theology this angel is bringing to young children mm-hmm. and they just learned lucia said they by some inward memory, they were able to remember those prayers that he taught them because they're not real easy to remember. One of them is called the angel prayer and the other one's the pardon prayer. But throughout the apparitions, you know, Francisco was so drawn to the Eucharist that he spent many, many hours in front of the tabernacle at the church. Lucia had received her first communion, but Jacinta and Francisco had not. It was the angel who gave them their first holy communion. Oh my goodness. And, and, and so, you know, the, one of our missions here at, you know, catholicmomsgroup.com is to remind mothers that, you know, I know I sometimes I'm afraid to say this, right. But that there is going to come a time where we're going to be made accountable for whether or not we made the effort to pass down the faith, to create the opportunity for children to have, you know, mystical experiences, for the children to be aware of, you know, the the rosary and so on and so forth. And, you know, sometimes moms these day and age, and me included, I'm not counting myself as any, you know, different, but sometimes we get so busy and so driven and, you know, we're driving to hockey, we're driving to baseball, we're driving to dance, we're making sure they get to university, we're making sure that they get a job, we're making sure that they've got the right car and the right running shoes. And I'm like, okay, okay, this is, those are all good things. Those are good things. They're not bad things. Um, but many, many, many years ago, I had a, a mystical experience and And in that mystical experience, like I had this sense of like, Dorothy, imagine how different the world would be if every mom, um, when the kids were little, took their kids to daily mass. And from there, all gifts, all graces, all blessings would come. And I'm like, well, you know, it's a good idea, but I don't know how practical it is, but um, you know, I, I did my, I had a dramatic encounter with our Blessed Mother after having uh, my first child. And it changed like everything. It changed everything. And one thing that kind of breaks my heart is when I see mothers hardening their hearts, right? Um and sometimes a mother has to harden her heart because she needs to get 101 tasks done. But if our blessed mother asked the kids to have a devotion to the immaculate heart of Mary, like Barb, can you tell me a little bit about what that connection might be between <clears throat> mothers worshiping the immaculate heart of Mary and moms today hardening their hearts? Like that's a, a very kind of 
um, passion is probably the wrong word, but like if I could say there's a fire, there's a fire, someone listen, <laughs> we're hardening our hearts too much, you know, can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I think what Mary, why our Lord wants the devotion to Immaculate established is because we need that mother's heart. And the more you do what she asked us to do at Fatima, the more you pray the rosary, you're drawn into the treasure that's in her heart. And that's what she wants to show us. So the, the mysteries of the rosary draw us into meditation that, you know, is very difficult to do, but any Carmelite spiritual director will tell you to start with 15 minutes of meditation. And it's really hard to do because your mind is distracted. So she gave us the rosary to help us center our minds on Christ. And then we learn from the treasure that's in her own heart. If you remember in the Luke's gospel and, you know, that Mary, every time something happens, it says she treasured these things in her heart or she pondered them in her heart. So this is the heart that is the closest to the heart of Jesus. And she wants us to get close to her so she can show us the heart of her son. And I will say that um, someone once asked Lucia, why didn't Our Lady ask for daily mass? And she said, because not everybody can get to daily mass. So don't yeah. have a guilt trip if you can't. When I was raising my kids, I couldn't either. And even now I'm working now full time. I didn't have that opportunity when I was raising my kids. I was freelancing all the time and just as crazy trying to balance yes, work yes. and yeah. home, even as a freelancer. But I couldn't, it's hard for me sometimes to get to mass even now, but she said, everybody can pray the rosary. Everybody can find 15 minutes in the car or, you know, while you're rocking your child. I used to pray when I was nursing my child at night. Um, so that's something we can all do. And also, again, I have to stress the essential message of Fatima is to offer up every day your, whatever is happening in your day. I look at my kitchen, which I just now got remodeled after 30 years of looking at this kitchen that I hated, but I used to say, Lord, this is where I'm working out my salvation <laughs> in making spaghetti and cleaning dish. I said, my purgatory was going to be having to do dishes forever and they're never done. That was my <laughs> cross for many, many years because you can yes. never keep your house clean. And it was, it was hard. And, and then, um, so I, I have to say, I actually started writing a book back then called Stuck in God's Box. I felt like I was stuck in God's will of being a mom and a spouse, but I so desperately wanted to break out and use my, my education. And I remember saying to my husband, why would I encourage my daughters to go to college when this is where you end up playing Candyland 20 times a day with yeah. your son? I was so frustrated. Had I had the Fatima message and been practicing it, I would have looked at this, this is where I'm at right now. And my spiritual director told me at the time, sometimes God wants to purify you. So he's going to take this great person he created that has all this talent and knowledge and education and, you know, potential. And he's just going to put you in his quiver and let you just sit in the quiver. And then he's going to pull you out someday and put you on a shelf. And now he's going to use you, but you've been purified during that time. It was a beautiful uh, metaphor for me to help me not feel like God was leaving me in this state forever <laughs> yeah no and it's um you know you know and different women have you know different experiences of of motherhood for sure i like i remember i was like so stuck in the corporate sector and i've been traveling internationally and this and this and i was just so exhausted and when i finally had a baby it felt like heaven on earth I thought, oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> like it just felt like, you know, because uh, it didn't, you know, I always thought I was going to get married at 24. I didn't get married until I was 34. I didn't have my first until later. Right. So we all have a, a different experience. Um, now, Barb, can you tell me, like you've mentioned uh, before we, you know, we were chatting a little earlier that, that you have kind of a unique and close bond with the spirituality of the two children and that we're, that there's something there that really um, speaks yeah. to you and resonates and, and that you think that maybe even at one point you're gonna, you might consider writing a book. Yeah. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about, you know, your understanding of their spirituality and what you've learned and what you've read and, and so on and so forth? Yeah, and the three children are really, I mean, if you want to, if you get drawn into the Fatima message, it just keeps going deeper and deeper and deeper. It really is a, and, and like I said, Mary appeared six times, said very few things, but 
what really drew me in was when I was asked to edit the biography of Sister Lucia, written by the Coimbra sister, Carmelite sisters in Coimbra, Portugal, where she lived for 55 years. They wrote her official biography mm -hmm. and they asked me to edit the English translation. That's when I really understood Lucia. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody's attracted to little Jacinta and Francisco. They're, they're so cute and they died young. They died of the Spanish flu. They, you know, Jacinta was, had been asked to suffer so much. But Lucia really teaches us about that acceptance every day. She called it the long, hard road of um, mundane, the, the, Martin, the martyrdom of mundaneness, the mundaneness of your daily life. It's a martyrdom you're accepting to accept that mundane time. She, um, you know, so she she had a lot of struggles in in the um, convent where she lived, but she she wrote so beautifully to many priests and mothers and fathers and people that wrote to her. So she really understood that message of accepting God's will for your life, where you're at and you're accepting your duties in life. Um, but Jacinta, you know, anybody who's done a 33 day consecration to St. Louis de Montfort, you say, how do I live this consecration? And really when I'm reading St. Louis de Montfort, I say he was jumping for joy when our lady came at Fatima because he's like, finally, she's going to come and teach them this devotion to her immaculate heart. Mm -hmm. And the children achieved the highest levels of devotion, true devotion to Jesus through Mary, because just from living this Fatima message, you know, Jacinta, they say, you know, she did such extraordinary penances. They were given a vision of hell in the July apparition that terrified them. It's the exact same vision that St. Faustina had, very similar in their description of it. And this is before we had spirit Halloween stores where you see all these demonic masks, these children had never seen anything like it. And it terrified them. But um, Jacinta took on great penances after that. She wanted nobody to go to hell. And she had very a lot of mystical experiences with Our Lady during the time that she was suffering from the Spanish flu. Our Lady had asked her, do you want to go to heaven with Francisco or will you remain a little while longer to suffer for souls. And she chose to remain and suffer for souls. Now, Lucia would say that she had received extraordinary graces to want to take on that kind of level of penance. Um, and she called it almost a divine obsession. But Luc I would say that Jacinta herself reached those highest levels at St. Louis de Montfort talks about where you're doing these radical penances. And Francisco teaches us about devotion to the Holy Eucharist and his desire to console our Lord. You know, he had such a, um, he became like a, a um, contemplative. He was a contemplative soul. And he really understood God in, interiorly. And when, when they had those experiences of God in the light of Our Lady, he, he couldn't even explain it. But he was so drawn to want to console Jesus and Mary, to console their hearts that were so offended from sin. And then I spoke about Lucia. So the three of them teach you, they, they all became true devotion to Mary, consecrated to Mary, but they show in their different spirituality, their different charisms, how that looks in our daily lives. My gosh, Barb, we could kind of unpack every sentence. You just said this. <laughs> You're, uh, it's you know, just incredibly clear how astutely aware you are because there's so much there. Um, a, a couple of things that, you know, kind of struck me and I, as I was praying, um, to prepare for our session today, I thought, okay, Lord, what, what message do you want me to impart to, you know, the moms that are here? And, you know, like one message is like, when you think like the moms today, seem to be, you know, a little bit obsessed about exposing their children to as much as possible, giving them as much as they can, and giving them as many opportunities as they can. And so let's give them a lot of the world, the world, the world, the world, right? So, okay, and not that, you know, going to ballet and iPods and all, like all these things, they're not bad. But if our central focus is to flood 
the mind and the heart of our children with experiences and people and sports and stuff. There's no silence in their life. So even if God wants to talk to your child, there's no room because the child is being stimulated 24 seven. And with moms being so busy, um, you know, many authors and whatever have said to me that many of today's children are spiritual orphans, right? Yeah. They're spiritual orphans. Um, you know, some aren't being taken to mass. Some um, aren't, don't have any quiet time. So, and so I, I want to encourage each mom here, like to almost do an examination of conscience and say to yourself, okay, do my children have opportunities for mystical experiences, right? Um, that could be by going for a walk in the woods or a walk by Lake Ontario or, um, or shutting off social media or, you know, and, you know, pediatricians just go on and on and on about how children shouldn't have any access to um, devices in the first, I think, four years at all. Um, so that's one thing I'm, I'm called to, to, to share with you now. Barb, can you tell us a little bit more about their well, spirituality and their and what, what well, are your some thoughts about how this should affect mothers? You know, well, you know, I would say that they, you know, they were they were poor. They weren't living in our times. I mean, we we live in a culture that I, maybe it's getting a little more balanced out. I really say that COVID did some good things for us, but I mean, we had we were so driven to make sure our kids could be super achievers and and get into the best schools and get those top paying jobs because we're driven by fear of the economy and we're driven by fear of, you know, that our kid is going to be a slug. And sometimes they just need time to figure things out and we should be okay with that. I'm dealing with young adults right now. And, you know, my 20 year old son is in the Marines because he says, I don't really know what to do. And, you know, you got to be able to help them figure out who they are. And I really think um, even just sitting down at the table and making paper masks with you know kids love to create and give them the tools to do that and um i had i had friends who whose kids were very involved with every sport imaginable and of course they're probably super achievers but they are really dead inside they never made room for god their kids grew up not knowing and i remember as adults they were when their kids got a lot older they were trying to introduce them to some kind of a sunday morning thing but it was too late and this culture will come and swallow that up and we make ourselves too busy we really that time between mother and child is so important just to sit and read a book and you know so i feel like that's what our blessed mother is also saying to just you know she demanded of these kids to pray every day you know there was she didn't say do it after you're done tending the sheep and after you've done set the table you know it was just they had their responsibilities and duties but prayer was the number one thing she asked for and um, I feel like the mother, the Blessed Mother herself is a, she's a stern mother. Lucia said she always looks serious. And I believe she's, she's serious because she's serious about the mess what's going on in our world. And, but yet she's a, a gentle mother who wants to draw us in and she wants our children to know her. Mm -hmm. And if we can imitate Mary, then our children will know the Blessed Mother as well. So I you know, to take that time to let your kids figure themselves out and have that peace and quiet. I was always so happy that I was able to work from home. So my kids didn't have to get up at six in the morning and be shipped off to daycare and be raised by someone else. That was something I will never regret that I did that. Mm -hmm. But I was very pulled between my career and, and motherhood. And it was not a good place to be. It was yeah. hard. No, and, and sometimes when I look back, like I was always felt guilty because I kind of thought, well, I had this great opportunity to, you know, make this money and I didn't want to travel away from the kids when they were little. And so I, I like, you know, sort of torn with guilt, but at the same time, you know, I was called to, to, to just work in Toronto, Ontario. And okay, if I had to go away for a day and my mom could watch, you know, the kids or something, but, um, the other thing that some millennial moms will now call me and say, and it's kind of, it's, it's sometimes hard to hear. There's like sometimes millennial moms will call me and say, you know, I've had my first baby, but my grandmother or my mother, which is the grandmother of the child, 
she's too busy to be a grandmother. She's either skiing in Colorado or snorkeling in Punta Cana. She doesn't want to make chicken soup and kind of do the traditional grandma stuff, right? And like sometimes it's kind of frightening because you know, like if we don't have time, for example, to visit the sick, which, you know, if we don't have time to go to funerals, we don't have time to cook a homemade meal, we don't have time to pray, we don't have time, you know, it just kind of feels like we're being robbed of our lives, you know, and, and that our hearts are being ripped out of us, right? Yeah. Um, so this devotion to our blessed mother, um, I would also encourage, you know, the moms that are listening today to actually have like little conversations with your kids, no matter how old they are, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if you've got a three-year-old, a two-year-old, oh, today I, I listened to a talk about Our Lady of Fatima and our blessed mother came down and she spoke to three children and you should see their eyes, like, you know, like if you have little conversations about a guardian angel, like it, it leaves an imprint on a child's soul. There's a couple of comments here. So I want to just, so Roseanne Warren says, wow, Barb, that's such a great metaphor, a quiver in our Lord's pouch. So that was something someone really loved. Um, And then someone else is saying here, Catherine is saying, yes, that is so beautiful and true, Barb. Thank you for that affirmation. Um, And then someone else says, maybe right not right now to do the grandma stuff, but it will come to the grandma. I know this from experience. My mom worked because she had to since my dad died young and had no time to babysit. But much later, my mom was available to help me praise Jesus. And, and, and yes, you know, and I I don't, you know, it's not my intention to come across as judgmental. And I apologize. If I I have, Um, that's not my intention. But because yes, it, you know, it all depends on your state in life. And I'm saying, okay, is, are you working to get a Mercedes? Or are you working to get, you know, a second or third car? Or are you working to put food on the table, right? Like our, our Lord knows, our Blessed Mother knows. And it's a very private decision between um, you, you know, yourself, your spiritual director, and uh, God, not, um, but um, I think I, I, that all of us women deal with guilt, no matter what. I mean, I told you earlier about my babysitting club women, and we're all still really good friends. And we get together with our husbands and spouses, and we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. And we do a Seder dinner every year before Easter. And we just have a beautiful relationship with these people. And all of us, some of them were homeschoolers. One worked for corporate world target for 30 years. Mm -hmm. Um, others were like me, they were part-time workers. They were keeping their fingers in the, in a, in some kind of a career through freelance and all, and another was a nurse. All of us did our best to raise our kids Catholic and keep them steeped in the Catholic world. And all of us are dealing with at least one child who's wayward, um, all kinds of things, you know, horrible things, but we're supporting each other. Now, one of them, her, her 18 year old son is living in in the car because he chooses to do drugs rather than follow their rules at home and get some help. Another one, uh, the the daughter came home and wants to marry her roommate who's a woman. You know, there's just, and all of us, what we've learned over the years, do not feel guilty about that you didn't do enough, that you weren't home enough, that you weren't with the child enough, that you weren't Catholic enough. I mean, like I said, we all came from completely different families and spouses. And, but we're all praying for you, praying with each other now and supporting each other. And what our Lord wants us to do is trust him. Mm-hmm. Trust Our lady is driving us to that trust. Trust mm-hmm. our Lord and turn your children over to me. Consecrate them to my immaculate heart so that I can put my mantle of protection over them. And no matter what they go through in life, I'm always going to lead them to Jesus. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, it's a, it's a, we're being called to trust right now and you can consecrate your own children and your spouse because they're part of your blood family you can consecrate them to the immaculate you can't consecrate your niece or nephew but, but you can, can pray for them but you, you can. can consecrate your children and grandchildren so 
Um, and how would we get some more information on how to do that? Well, I mean, there's beautiful consecration prayers to the Immaculate Heart that you can find on the internet. Our organization, BlueArmy.com, we have a brand new website that you can find information on Fatima on the prayers. Um, we're still building on it. Uh, but I, I would just just turn to Our Lady every day and pray that rosary and let her heart teach you. Let her heart be your heart. I want to share one more thing. My family went through a very terrible thing about seven years ago. It should have been the destruction of our family. My sister called me that morning and she said, Barb, I prayed to the Blessed Mother that you're always telling us to be a refuge in her heart. So I asked her to be a refuge for you. And that day in my living room, I felt the presence of the Blessed Mother. And I will tell you, it was not this motherly embracing me and saying, oh, Barb, I'm so sorry this happened. Let me comfort you. It was sheer authority. I felt such authority in my living room that, that day. And I felt like she was telling me that I have come here to take over. And everything that happened after I totally trusted in Jesus. And I said, I will say to the day I die, if I'm standing before hell, I want that authority next to me. I was so amazed at who she is, who she really is. I'm, I'm getting goosebumps listening to you because again, um, you know, for many years I've kind of struggled because I've got a, you know, kind of like a strong and domineering personality. And I'm like, oh, I'm not meek like Mary and I'm not gentle. <laughs> I'm not <calm. laughs> and, then, and then I was talking to my spiritual director. He goes, Dorothy, are you kidding? Mary, you know, Mother Mary was a Jewish mother. You know, she <laughs> she didn't miss her words, and she stepped on Satan. Uh, she stepped yeah, on she's the crushing man, right? Right? Like, don't, don't think she's some kind of meek wallflower. Um, and, and that's one thing too that I, I pray that each and every one of us here that um, we reclaim our maternal authority yes. by turning to our blessed mother. I remember one of the moms in my own mom's group said, you know, we have a real problem now because most moms, they're afraid of their children. Mm -hmm. And if like, if you're afraid of your children and you're afraid to call a spade a spade, then like the world, like we're, we're going to go to hell, hell in a handbasket, right? Because like, the, the mother has got to say certain things. And now your children might not obey, they might not, you know, like, but they need to know that premarital sex is a mortal sin, and it's wrong. And know your girlfriend, and you can't sleep in your bedroom at the cottage, no, while you're under this roof. Um, and no, you can't travel together to Puerto Rico. No, like, no, no, no. While you're under this roof, there are certain, you know, rules and I used to say to my kids, like, if you live in a dormitory, there are rules. If you live in an apartment building, there are rules. And if you want to continue living in this house, there are rules. Because one day I'm going to face God and uh, I'm going to be made accountable. And, you know, um, so anyway, I, I apologize. I, I, I talk too much. I'm sorry. Oh. But um, any other thoughts, uh, Barb, that you might want to impart to moms today? Well, I think Our Lady does want to teach us that gentle heart, but also that we do have authority as a mother and a spouse. We do have some authority. And, um, you know, to, to learn from her, like I said, she's, she was very serious when she appeared at Banner. She was not joyful and laughing. She had a serious look on her face. It wasn't an angry look. It wasn't a and sometimes they sensed her sadness of her heart. We all have that same heart. And I think we should cherish our mother's heart because God gave us something very special in, in being mothers. And he gave this empower, incredible role to his own mother, to a woman. And I mean, she's, the, she's here to help us right now. She's a woman clothed with the sun in the book of Revelation. She, um, you know, the when the when Satan could not get to her and the child, he went after her children, and that's us. Mm -hmm. We have to remember Satan is going after our children too, especially if we're devoted and you know following our Lord. And so we're under attack, and she gave us the weapons to fight back, and that's the rosary, and to get to mass as often as you can, the sacraments, and to 
adore our Lord in the Holy Eucharist, I mean, we, we will be strengthened. And she promises with the rosary that no matter what's going on around you, you will have peace. And I can say that personally, I do have peace mm -hmm. with everything. It's, um, she, she, her promises are true, so. Yeah, and, and I, I encourage each of you here today, um, like, like sometimes we, we harden our hearts in ways that, you know, that maybe are hurting us, right? And, and that sometimes listening to the tenderness that might be in our heart or making a decision with our hearts, you know, maybe our husbands and our, um, you know, maybe our husbands, maybe our sons, maybe our daughters or, oh, well, you're crazy. Like that's not possible. And, and that with our blessed mother, like the supernatural is possible. And um, when I look at our own ministry, you know, when I, when I think that, you know, we've got a mother's group in North Pole, we've got a mother's group in Minnesota, we've got a mother's group like here. And I'm like, how did that happen? That happened through our blessed mother's intercession, like hand over fist. And um, she can accomplish things that we ourselves can't accomplish on our own. Um, and again, talk to your kids about the supernatural power of, you know, our guardian angels of, um, of our blessed mother to, to make it kind of real. CCC of America has a animated um, cartoon of, of Fat, the Fatima message. Mm -hmm. And I showed it at my kids' school when they were in elementary school. And some of the moms were kind of, you know, freaking out. Oh, you showed my children, you know, hell. And I'm like, they see worse things. Our lady showed them hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the six-year-old. <laughs> yeah. And an eight-year-old hell, so. Uh, um, it's, so uh, Amanda's asking here, CC what? It's, if you Google CCC of America, CCC of America, um, they have, um, they have beautiful and they're they're Disney quality saints videos. Um, my kids grew up watching them whenever they said, "Mom, can we watch TV or can we watch this?" I'm like, "Sure," and I plug in a saints video. <laughs> we used to have the Veggie Tales. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly, right. So yeah, so it's CCC of uh, America. They've got some great, great productions there. Anyway, it is almost three o'clock, the, the hour of uh, mercy. I know some of you are going to want to run off to pray the divine mercy chaplet, but um, does anyone have, before we close, does anyone have any questions you'd like to ask of Barb or anything before we wrap up? Um, fantastic. Thank you. I realized if we don't teach them what God is, people will teach them what exactly, exactly yeah. what he is. And so, um, and then there's an, someone else sort of popped up a question here. Well, oh, there it is. Okay, ta yeah, there we go. CCC of America. Come Holy Spirit. I'll put it in the thing here. Um, is, is someone actually provided a YouTube link so you don't, they don't have to even purchase the thing. So I, and like, I bought that whole series of DVDs and uh, I bought, you know, some for my God kids and they were just like a fantastic, fantastic resource because they're aimed at the age of the child. So anyway, Barb, I wanted to thank you. I know you made a huge sacrifice, you know, uh, to uh, um, any, any closing thoughts that you'd like to share as we're signing off here. Any closing thoughts? Uh I'm reading a chat, sorry. That no, 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 uh, no. I just want to say, let the Immaculate Heart of Mary be your refuge and turn to her because she wants to help us. So, And I do think it's important to teach the children about the Holy Family and saints that they can relate to, that little kids became saints, you know? And, yes. And here's how, you know, so. Yeah, someone's asking, should we provide our children with a specific place to pray? Um, and... I, I really, really encourage you to do that. Um, like some people have the room in the, their home to have a little altar. Um, we, 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 have a, we have a little room, we call it the Mother Mary room. And usually our Blessed Mother is in that little Mother Mary room. And, you know, we didn't, we prayed the rosary every day as a family for a period of time. 
And then once high school started, my, you know, functions and relations and economics. And, and one of my greatest regrets is kind of, you know, my husbands are like, we just don't have time to do this. And I, I kind of mad that I didn't fight for it a little bit more to, to keep the tradition. But um, we can't be perfect in all of our traditions. But remember to teach your kids their morning and nighttime prayers Remember on your birthday or I know Mother's Day is just passed to say as a gift to me, I'd like the family to pray the rosary again, as we used to, you know, or for Christmas, I don't want any Christmas gifts. I just want us all to sit down and pray the rosary. So remember, I like to say, pray for your children, pray with your children and teach your children to pray. Yeah. So um, I always close with this little song by Carol Burnett. <clears throat> I'm so glad we had this time together just to have a laugh and sing a song. Seems we just get started and before you know it comes a time we have to say so long. So um, thank you. Uh, 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 yeah. And so ladies, if you enjoyed it next week, we're, we're, we have uh, Heidi Saxton from Ave Maria Press. We're going to be talking about how to manage the mommy monster. Do your emotions ever go crazy with uh, virtue? So, uh, and please tell other moms about it so that we can have more moms next week and the week after and so on and so forth. So thank you very much, Barb. Um, thank you. I'm going to offer a rosary for you today for your talk. Thank you. I need that. Yeah, and if any of you have the time, can you play, pray a rosary in Thanksgiving for Barbara and her intentions and her children, okay? So okay. thank you, everybody. Mwah, mwah, mwah. We'll see you next Thursday, Midday Moms. Um, talk to you soon. Bye okay. now. Bye, Barb. Thanks very much. Thank you.